Okay, so this is kind of fun. Um, this is a really random thingy um, that's an application of a floor function. If you're looking for the largest power of a prime number that divides n factorial, is this summation here. So basically what you're trying to do is if you're trying to find the prime factorization of like n factorial, you could use this method eventually. to If you list all the primes beneath that number and then go nuts, then you're in good shape. So let's say I was going to try doing um, 20 factorial. Okay, so the first question is, if I was going to be factoring out 20 factorial, it's going to have a prime factorization of 2 to the something, 3 to the something, 5 to the something, probably at some point. The question is then, how many 2s? All right, so if I list the numbers 1 through 20, so all these numbers are getting multiplied together. So um, the first question is, like I said, how many twos are there? So there's two here, there's two of them here, there's one here. There's three of them here, there's one here. There's two of them here, there's four of them, oh, there's two of them here. There's four of them here, there's one of them here, and there's two of them here. So if I'm summing these by rows, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I have 10 of them, and then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of them, and then I have 1, 2 of them, and then on the fourth row, I only have one of them. So these here are the counts per row of how many twos I have if I factor it out. Okay. So the question is, well, how would I get these numbers just looking at the number 20? All right. Um, so the way to get a 10, um, well, this is, okay, I'm multiplying it by 2 because that's how many 2s there are. But if I'm just looking at just the count, then I could do this. I'll just do it like this. Just do the flat up count. In fact, I'll just rewrite it to make it like a count. So for the count, I have 10, I have um, 5. I have two and I have one. That's how many twos are there. I guess I probably shouldn't have added them together anyway. That was kind of a weird thing to do. But anyway, um, so um, how do I get 10 from 20? Now, most of y'all probably look at that and go, okay, well, clearly 10, uh, 20 divided by two is gonna be 10. Yay! Well, how do I get to five? Okay, so 20 divided by four. Well, yeah, that's five. Okay, I'm starting to see a pattern here because this is two to the first. Um, this is two squared. So to get to 20, to get to the 2, so clearly be 20 divided by 8. Except 20 divided by 8 is not a integer. 20 divided by 8 is 2 and a half. Oh, so I have 2 and a half, but I wish I had 2. So I actually want to take the floor of that. Same thing for the 1. 20 divided by 2 to the 4th. It's going to be 20 divided by 16. Um, I'm getting 1.25, so I need to take the floor of that. Now, taking the floor of these here doesn't give me any problems. Taking the floor of an integer just gives me the integer back. But that's where um, this comes in, is that you're going to sum the floors of that n value that you're factorialing divided by an increasing power of whatever number you're trying to um, divide it out by. So that's how, in general, we were able to say for, like, the powers of 2 would be um, this... 20 divided by 2, 20 divided by 2 squared, 20 divided by 2 cubed. So that comes out to i going from 1 to 4 of 20 divided by 2 to the i, and then the floor of that. Okay, so that's the same thing that we have here, except this is just accounting for the fact that it doesn't know how high up. I mean, technically, you could also divide 20 by 2 to the fifth, um, 20 divided by 2 to the fifth, but you're going to get 0.625, and the floor of a fraction is just zero. So, or floor of a fraction less than one is just zero. So you can the, the official definition goes up to infinity because once you get above the value of 20, then it's just done. So how would we know if we we're going to code this how high up we need to go? Where does this four come from? Well, again, this is similar to if you were watching the video on doing base conversions, we need that 2 to the n needs to be less than or equal to 20. Okay, so if that's our, um, our max or something like that, um, 
but n has to be a uh, an integer. So I can do, say, okay, well that means that log um, base, uh, well, let's say n needs to be less than, I'll do it that way, n needs to be less than log base 2 of 20, but because I want it to be an integer, that means specifically that I need to take the floor of log base 2 of 20. So remember I can do log of 20 divided by log of 2, that gives me 4.32, take the floor of that, and that would be the 4 that I'm looking for, which is the 4, the F-O-U-R that my for loop, F-O-R, is going to, um, to work. Okay, so what's kind of cool about this is if we want to kind of code this up, then what we can say is, um, so basically for any number n that I'm trying to do, if I'm trying to do the factorization of n factorial, um, I potentially need to include every prime number that is less than n itself. So if I was going to try and write this kind of up in pseudocode before I go to MATLAB, I would say, okay, so for every p um, in primes, well, like the set of primes that's less than or equal to n, obviously if n is prime, then its factorization is pretty simple. Or, no, I guess it's not. The factorization of n is simple, but not the factorization of n factorial. Okay, for all p that are in the set of primes that are less than n, um, basically I'm going to have, so this is to get the full prime factorization, um, and then within that I'm going to get the exponent for each one of those primes. So I'm going to for loop nested inside this for loop. So the exponent of this particular p, whatever one I'm looking at, I'm going to start it off at zero, and then for some k going from 1 to log base prime of n, I'm going to, again, take the floor of that. Um, the exponent is going to be the previous value um, plus, remember how we did the um, this thing here, the n divided by um, the prime to that power and then the floor of it plus... Um, n divided by p to the k and take the floor of that and then you need to store that somewhere um, so that we can eventually get the full prime factorization of it. So that's kind of our pseudocode. Now our next goal is to go and put this into MATLAB and see what we can do with it.